Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so we got Kim Cheadle to resign. That, of course, was a good thing. But it's also something that would have never occurred without the tremendous public pressure for her to do so. She wasn't going to resign. It's obvious that DHS leadership has really no interest in getting to the bottom. Frankly, their lack of curiosity, I think, is incredibly scary. But it's obvious now that it's not just Kim Cheadle who has to go, but rather the whole freaking lot of them. Again, we're getting more context as more clips and more information continues to drop. This time we have actual text message evidence exposing the Secret Service Department itself. It's time for accountability. All of these individuals involved with the planning of this event should be fired immediately. And I don't think that's going to be too much of a controversial statement after I show you guys what I'm about to show you. Again, I'm saying the same thing. It's a whole lot worse than you initially expected. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so we've been really focused on the timeline. What transpired before the event, during the event, and then, of course, the shooting itself while Trump was speaking. We've been trying to understand exactly what happened in terms of a timeline of events. Well, it's getting clearer and clearer by the day. Just the shocking nature of the sequence of events here. You know, maybe, just maybe, this is why the DHS isn't presenting an official timeline of events. Remember when Kim Cheadle showed up to testify in front of Congress and she said she had, quote, no timeline? Drone over the area, period. Any part of the area. Again, I would have to go back and check the timeline of when that took place and when the event. Why didn't you bring the timeline with you today to answer our questions? I don't have all of the answers on the timelines based on the criminal investigation. Do you have a timeline that you, do you have a timeline at all from, from any of the day? I have a uh, timeline that does not have specifics. That's shocking. <laughs> I, that is absolutely unacceptable. That means you are a failure at your job. Well, it's obvious why they want to avoid the issue of timeline, because it doesn't look so good for them. We are learning new details now in that assassination attempt against the former president, now suggesting an earlier timeline than what authorities had claimed. Text messages obtained by Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley from the Beaver County officials, that's the county to the west of Butler County, show that law enforcement assigned to secure the rally were aware of a gunman about 90 minutes before Trump took the stage. That'd be around 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, CB Cotton live in Butler, PA again to begin another week on this matter. CB, good morning. Bill, good morning. These text messages now revealing that local sn counter snipers had spotted gunman Thomas Matthew Crooks earlier than previously reported. Bill, as you said, these text messages were obtained by Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley from the Beaver County Emergency Services Unit. And the first message was sent from a local counter sniper who spotted Crooks at a picnic table at around 426 p.m. That officer wrote, quote, someone followed our lead and snuck in and parked by our cars just so you know i'm just letting you know because you see me go out with my rifle and put it in my car so he knows you guys are up there less than an hour later crooks had moved and was reportedly right below the local counter sniper team who were on the second floor in a warehouse building one of one of the counter snipers then took photos of crooks which were later exchanged in a group chat with a text message reading quote I did see him with a rangefinder looking towards stage. FYI, if you want to notify Secret Service snipers to look out, I lost sight of him. These photos were reportedly relayed to the Secret Service posted in a command center. But according to the Washington Post, the Secret Service agents tasked with directly protecting Trump were never alerted. Holy frickin' moly, folks. 90 frickin' minutes ahead. I am at a complete loss for words. Let's go to that text message. Kid lingering around building we are in. AGR, I believe it is. I did see him with a rangefinder looking towards the stage. For your information, if you want to notify Secret Service snipers to look out, I lost sight of him. Now, this seems to be a text message from one of the police officers involved, not a Secret Service agent. You had police officers obviously attempting to do their job with whatever positioning they were put in and whatever resources that they were given and 90 minutes ahead they're bouncing around information and they're talking about this kid with a rangefinder and saying notify secret service snipers and nothing was done what exactly happened here was the secret service just not communicating with local law enforcement that seemed to be the suggestion from involved police officers based on the clip we covered yesterday we were supposed to get a face-to-face -face briefing with the secret service snipers um, whenever they arrived, and that never happened. So I think that that was probably 
a pivotal point where I started thinking things were wrong because that never happened and we had no communication with the Secret Service. You had no communication with the Secret Service at all on that Saturday? Not until after the shooting. And by then? It was too late. The Secret Service wasn't even communicating with local law enforcement. Can somebody please explain that to me? How on earth does that make any sense? You know, it turns out it's exactly what we thought. They spotted the kid acting suspiciously, basically doing what we've seen in all the video footage, lingering around, clearly doing reconnaissance work and sniper reconnaissance work, looking through a rangefinder, figuring out the exact distance to the stage of all places. Police officers warned about it, and nothing was done, it fell on deaf ears. Every single person, even tangentially, associated with security implementation on the day has to resign. And I mean, should have resigned two weeks ago. It's simply unbelievable. And I think the question that everybody's asking themselves, again, is the same question. How was Donald Trump allowed to step on that stage? Again, if we analyze the timeline, let's put it into perspective. They knew that there was a threat 90 minutes ahead. They took a picture of him. Initially, that was just a report that they took a picture of him and that was it. Well, now we know it's absolutely confirmed. They took a photo of him, they spoke about him, and they were even sending text messages with the intent of alerting Secret Service agents of a possible sniper threat. I mean, obviously, that's where the cop's brain was at. He sees a guy with a rangefinder acting suspicious, pinging the direct distance of the stage, and immediately he goes, hey, let's warn the Secret Service snipers about what I just saw. That's not enough of a red flag? Make it freaking make sense. 90 minutes wasn't enough time? Give me a freaking break. 30 seconds should have been enough time. I mean, these people are supposed to be the pros of the pros. If they spotted a guy with a rangefinder, a guy acting suspicious, less than 30 seconds should be enough to make a decision on comms. They should all be speaking on the same frequency on the same network. Hey, get the president off the stage. Someone's acting very suspicious here. That should have been a 30 second occurrence. 90 minutes wasn't enough time? It's simply unacceptable. I cannot accept these facts. Nobody should accept the outcome here, especially this outcome with no obvious swift accountability following thereafter. They had all the time in the world. Here's another clip that just dropped that again puts it all into perspective. There's fucking cops surrounding this whole entire building right now. Okay. There's something going on in this building. Oh my god. There's somebody in this building. And it's not easy. Because we have millions and millions of people in the country. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have drug dealers. We have people that just not be here. In recorded history at the best order. In fact, if they could ever put up a chart on it, they could do it. You guys have access to that chart, but I love it so much. You don't mind if I go off teleprompter, do you? This is not going to be just a little bit more. I'm trying to explain that. Oh, this is what happens. You guys are doing it. They're getting better with that. My guys, take a look at that chart. Take a look at the arrow at the bottom. See the big red, red arrow, right? So that's what I want to know. Is that the lowest point, and that comes right from the government services, comes right out of border patrol. And take a look at that. So that arrow is the lowest amount of illegal immigration ever in recorded history. And then. And then the word of the Make yourself small, bro. I don't know what's going on.
how long was that video from start to finish? Over two minutes. The shots start ringing towards the end of the video. You have two minutes of police officers surrounding the building. Clearly, they've identified a threat. They're like, oh, what's going on all surrounding the building? And again, you mean to tell me this entire time, as police officers are trying to isolate a threat, as people are pointing their fingers saying there's a guy with a gun, I mean, you're literally seeing on screen a bunch of regular citizens, people who are just rally goers, even a guy on a freaking horse with a Trump 2024 flag. All of these people clearly have identified a threat. Oh, and my bad, I believe that's actually a woman on the horse. Excuse me, I've misgendered someone. But anyways, you have all of these regular people who clearly feel as though there's something going on, there's a threat, they're leaving. They're literally getting out of there, they're getting out of Dodge. But the president was kept on the stage. I'm shaking my head right now, and again, I'm at a loss for words. I can't logically reconcile with what I'm seeing. It simply makes no sense. I think it's plainly obvious. The DHS needs an overhaul, and frankly, the U.S. Secret Service might need a complete do-over, a complete makeover, starting off from frickin' scratch, because either this was an inside job, or this security apparatus, this department, I mean, these people are utterly useless. The supposed best of the best, the top of the game, that is obviously not what we saw here. What's the explanation? Either complete incompetence, need a total reformatting of the department, or some people are up to something, and it's probably time we see a little bit of urgency into getting to the bottom of that. I don't know, it feels like people are less curious these days. It feels as though, you know, this thing's gonna be swept under a rug. They don't want you talking about it. Keep talking about it, because what the actual F, that's pretty much all I got to say. I don't know what else to say. I'm just kind of beating a dead horse. What the actual F? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.